instead of double stacking MDF today, we decided to use inch and a half thick particle board and we actually seamed it here. So we're just doing a butt joint seam. We didn't do any biscuit joints or anything in the middle. All we did was we pour, we mixed our resin at about 75 degrees, poured it in our seam, and then we um, ran our clamps and screws. We sucked the two pieces together, and then we'd poured a little more of product over the top, and then of course we sealed the rest of the sheets because this will be the bottom of our bar. Um, and tomorrow we're gonna show you guys as we pop this off, we're gonna let it cure out overnight. And in the morning, I'll show you guys as we pop these clamps off and flip our piece over, this should be one homogenous piece that should have essentially no seam, even though there is a seam in the middle. It should be stronger on the seam than it is um, in the center of the actual sheet. Leave it just a little bit of a gap, just like that. Perfect, I'll show you guys something. Right. Nobody ever believes it for about. Um, now with this, we'll just keep on mixing this and nice and slow and we'll get a pop in there and this here the seam with county poppy poxy. We're just gonna push it down into there, let it settle in there, and then we're gonna slide these pieces together. So you're kind of priming it? Yeah, and we're priming, sealing the whole bottom of this. Priming, so. Yep. Then tomorrow I kind of have a plan. I, I wanna kind of finish both sides of this so it looks pretty clean. You want to push your sheet into this sheet? We'll push this one back. Push, just bump them together so that. Now, go ahead, push. Yeah, you're oh, you're together. Different. That side's a, that side's a little open. Just a little open on that side, maybe. Yep, there you are. Yep, you're good, Derek. You're good. I'm just acting like I was trying to do something. <laughs> And then I'm gonna throw some screws in and I'll clamp it and kind of hold it sort of tight. And that's about all I'll do. Anybody else wants to do this? You can run it right across the seam, whatever you want to do. We want no excess up here, so just make sure that the center, as you finish that center, that you are kind of clearing it off. If that makes sense. And usually you can leave a little bit of a, see how there's a little bit of a sheet there? I'm laying it a little thick. You can come back up on it after a minute, let it set for a minute, so it really soaks in. 
Because you do want it to really penetrate that wood to seal it, right? And then you can come back and scrape it off. See all that air in it? That's from it soaking into that wood. So it's fine to leave a layer up there for a minute and then scrape it off. It's the best way to seal it. So if anybody wants to work that in. So is this the bottom of the uh, Yep. Yeah, this will be the bottom. Um, then hopefully tomorrow, maybe we'll pour white marble on the whole thing and call it a day. your tempo over there, sorry. My problem is doing one. this, I can't go to the top now. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to keep it going on. Yeah, going over here. Oh, wow. Oh. 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 Hey, if you pull it to the edge, yeah. it starts going down the edge for me. I'll come back and roll it. Because now that I've touched the side, if I go on top, I'll be bleeding crap all over. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. Oh, go over the edges? What do you mean? If you scrape the center here for me, then I'll put a screw there like that for you. Scrape the center this way? Well, yeah, or just across. I'm going to put a screw here and a screw there just so you don't have to work it again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to suck this together. Like that, you mean? Yeah, yeah. This in? yeah. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about with the. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you grab that and it'll really seal it. There you go. Get some of that. Yeah. You don't have to put a ton of pressure on these, but just. Look at that, just a tiny bit of pressure and it's already closed it right up. Look how tight that gets it. Oops. Oh, you're good. Oh, I can come back and pick it up now. It actually squished epoxy out already. So when you're in a, when you're doing a countertop in place, mm -hmm. what mill plastic do you use? Do you use five mil or do you use something? Oh, um, five or seven or whatever the heavy gauge, whatever this is. I'm not really picky when I'm doing it. Oh, when I'm doing it in place and I'm just masking, um, floor will get the heavy gauge like this. The um, countertop will just get the three I'm tape and drape the cabinets, but I usually double layer it. I'm usually pretty careful. Are you talking about the like that painter's plastic? Roll, uh -huh. roll, roll tape. tape. Yep, and I usually run a, a, a piece of two inch um, frog tape right up on the bottom of the, right under my countertop, right at the top of my drawers. Um, so that's like my first cut in, and then I stick that plastic to that, and then I sandwich it with one or two inch frog tape again. So I have a double layered frog tape right up, up at the top, and that's kind of sandwiching, and I, my first piece of tape under it's halfway up my cabinet, pulled out onto my floor, and that overhangs my heavy gauge plastic, and then my second piece kind of goes over all that. So usually I have a real redundancy, and then when I get done pouring, like as if I was done with that countertop, that black one over there, and it's not dripping anymore, I'll scrape my drips, wait about 10, 15 minutes, make sure it's not dripping, and I start peeling all my plastic down into itself, and I'll pull my whole floor and everything. So if I pour a job at say 10, 11 in the morning, by three or so, I should be having all my plastic at clean job. If I had two pours, by probably six o'clock that evening, I should have both my pours done. 